check was a very good idea to uh, try and bring people together, right? And that was my understanding with the president when he um, when he rolled out this uh, handshake. And without a doubt, the handshake has benefits. You know, the handshake has at least proven that you can compete, you can be political adversaries, but it is possible for you to sit down and put your differences aside and work towards national unity. That the handshake has proven. But at the same time, there are in unintended, maybe, consequences, right? As a consequence, we lost the opposition. As we talk today, what was NASA has disintegrated. That is the truth. So the opposition became a casualty. And on the other hand, the Jubilee Party has issues. We now have some gang calling themselves the Katanga Tanga, the yes. camps calling themselves the Eleweke, right? And therein lies the, the issue. You know, we cannot pretend that these issues are not there. Okay. And if you are pursuing inclusivity, national unity, and the result is that the opposition has disintegrated. ODM has called their former partners leeches. Jubilee on this other end, we have people divided. You know, that, that is something that uh, we must agree needs to be addressed. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. a very noble idea of bringing people together may give a result of people getting divided. Do, 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 you, do you feel his arrival has also, because um, I know you will tell me about uh, the nominations of your political party, mm -hmm. but do you think it also compromised uh, you succeeding President Kenyatta? His arrival, and now the fact that the way you said this handshake has brought a few issues here and there. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's also, apart from just compromising your position and the, the unity of Jubilee, do you think it has also <laughs> compromised your succession politics in terms of succeeding President Kenyatta? Let me tell you, uh, Ken, at the moment, my preoccupation as William Ruto and as Deputy President is to ensure that I perform my constitutional responsibility to support okay. Uhuru Kenyatta in the delivery of the Jubilee Manifesto and the Big Four. All right. I wake up, I sleep pursuing that agenda. Okay. As for what happens in terms of succession, there is time for that and the opportunity will come and we will deal with it. All right, let's play this sound bite and then tell me what you think. And we will deal with it. All right. Let's play this sound bite and then tell me what you think. All right, Deputy President, do you think that promise is still alive? You see, let me tell you what we agreed with Uhuru Kenyatta when we structured a political partnership. We agreed on two things. We agreed, number one, that whatever it takes, and by the way, it was not about winning an election or losing an election, right? That's the first time 20... In 2012. Yes. We must get rid of the politics of ethnicity that brings about violence and hate. And we said, whether we win or lose, and for your information, to be able to structure a relationship between Uhuru Kenyatta coming from Central Province 
and William Ruto coming from Rift Valley, which have seen a lot of property destroyed and a lot of lives lost, was not a simple assignment. Right? We, we decided. But it happened. And that, and that, and that happened. happened. Yes. Number two, we agreed that we will form a political formation and eventually a political party big enough to carry the aspirations of small communities and big communities. And we have achieved both. We have today the Jubilee Administration, or the Jubilee Party for that matter, that has 175 members of parliament. The largest ever political party after the one party state is the Jubilee Party. So okay. those are the two cardinal issues. You, and you it never was, agreed. It was never about yes. elections winning or losing. It was about getting a firm foundation for Kenya going into the future. So whether he's, he, he doesn't hold his end of the bargain, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you also, I supported Uhuru Kenyatta, not because I wanted him to support me when my time came. He made the promise himself. But when I supported Uhuru Kenyatta, it was not because I wanted him to support me thereafter. And I never made a claim Okay. And I never gave Uhuru Kenyatta a condition that I will support you so that you support me. That, that, so con that condition was not If there. your boss doesn't hold his side the of the one, bargain, the you're one, okay with the it. One, the one thing that I know Uhuru Kenyatta as president of Kenya, but more as Jubilee party leader, is that he is going to support the candidate of Jubilee when that time comes. And I want to tell you, if that candidate is going to be William Ruto, Uhuru Kenyatta will support. If that candidate will be somebody else, Uhuru Kenyatta not Kenyatta. just Uhuru Kenyatta, even you, even will me, support. Will, support. will support that other candidate. On the, on the, on and I am so clear about that. that. On the 13th of February last year, when you sat with Stephen Saka of the BBC, one of the things you told him is your understanding with the president is rock solid. What was that understanding? Because you were talking about politics of succession and if you felt pushed out. But precisely, you said precisely what your I understanding have told you. is rock My solid. My understanding with the president is that we will have a political party. And for your information, to get rid of the politics of ethnicity and to give opportunity to any Kenyan from whatever community who have the capability to take Kenya to the next level, you must have a huge political party that cuts across communities, that cuts across regions, and that is what we have in Jubilee. And that is why, Ken, I will defend Jubilee with everything I have, because we agreed with Uhuru Kenyatta, it is the right thing for Kenyans, so that we don't degenerate again. And why I get concerned when I see the opposition disintegrating, and when I see jubilee threatened with division the net result of what will happen is that we will go back to the politics of ethnicity this community will have a political party that community will have another political party and by the way there are people who are actively funding this because they want to Rip take us benefits. back they okay. want to take us <coughs> back to the politics of ethnicity my friend i do not want this country to run the risk of politics of ethnicity that breeds hate and violence. We must move from here and go into the future. On November 16th last year, when President Uhuru Kenyatta held a meeting at Sagana, um, one of the things uh, that was proposed, and he mentioned it in a light manner, that you are talking about the position of a prime minister. If it comes, I'm okay with it. That's what the president said in Sagana last year. This is a man who shall have served 10 years. We have spoken about the BBI and the proposals. And we have also spoken about sharing positions, which you think is what's happening on the platform, and you don't like it. One of the positions that has been advanced in public is the position of prime minister, regardless of how it will be structured, weak, strong, or otherwise. But it's been muted, and the president, who's serving for 10 years, has said, Ikikuja, he wouldn't mind. How does that sit with you as a deputy? Don't you think that is a question you should ask His Excellency the President? 
he has answered it. He doesn't mind. So I want your side. How does that sit with you? For President Kenyatta to serve 10 years, for them to come with a handshake and form the BBI and go out and sell it to the people and your fear as the Deputy President is that they could be changing the narrative here from Bomas 1 as you term it. And we might have a position of a strong Prime Minister and Uhuru Kenyatta is saying if there's that position, he wouldn't mind and Mark is not the only one. There are people on the campaign platform who have said he's too young to retire. So I'm asking you, how does that sit with you? First, I was not in the Sagana meeting. These are uh, reporting that uh, is uh, secondary, maybe tertiary. And you can never verify the authenticity of that story. I know Uhuru Kenyatta fairly well. He has told me more than once that he wants to run his two terms. He has a legacy to keep. And part of his uh, push is for us to finish with all this so that he can actualize the big four and his legacy programs, right? I have not had, as his deputy, I have never hear, heard Uhuru Kenyatta say that he wants to extend his term in any manner, right? So until he pronounces himself on that issue, uh, I will take it that uh, these are stories, these are rumors, these are people who are uh, talking, whatever they are talking. As for uh, these other people who are saying Uru Kenyatta is young and all this and all this, you know, it's not about age. Two terms is two terms. Even if you ran when you are 21 and became president, by 31 you retire, you go and do something else. And by the way, when you get out of office, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that you die. It just means you move on, you go and do other things, you do other assignments, you uh, there is so many ways people can contribute to the nation, you know. In fact, all of us, the 47 million of us, are contributing to the building of this nation. We have only one president at any one time, you know. But Ken Mejugu is doing his bit in journalism. The next person is doing his bit in business. The other person is doing his bit in farming. And everybody is making their contribution, and that is what makes us a nation. Well, I'm telling you, he said it at the Sagana meeting. Hmm. What were you there? You were yes, not there, Ken. Our team was there in the no. Sagana meeting, no, and we reported I mean, it. Ken. We reported sure. it. Sure. I'll tell you, we reported the, it. You are not in the meeting. We're going to find the sound bite, <laughs> and we are going to put it on air so that you know what President Uhuru Kenyatta said. Okay. Anyway, as we wait to find that sound bite where he said, Yo, what uh, let's talk about um, the proposals that are being made uh, on the BBI, because I really want to end the BBI to go something, to something else. Um, Apart from being the principal assistant of the president and doing what you do, there's so many proposals that are coming right now that could be incorporated in the BBI uh, report. Uh, with hindsight, having been the deputy president for the last eight, you have two more. Would you recommend, for example, that the position of the deputy president uh, be strengthened? more than it is right now, would you recommend that it has a more defined role rather than having assignments from your boss? Would you make such recommendation? Why don't you wait? I, am, I have some proposals to, oh, you have some with proposals. The, to okay. the use of Haji committee and I will make uh, my proposals at that time. Why don't you just be patient? It's, not, it's going to, to take long. Okay. After 28 years in politics, and I'm calculating from 1992, uh, then 1997, you first elected, if I'm not wrong, as an Eldorate North Member of Parliament. It's now 28 years. Uh, what would you say that uh, William Ruto has done in the last 28 years? That if he was to present himself to Kenyans for election today, he'll say, apart from just serving in the Jubilee government, and this is what we did with the Jubilee government, this is what William Ruto has done for the last 28, 28 years. I have a track record, a solid track record. From Eldoret North, where I was a member of parliament, if you go today to Eldoret North, they will tell you the member of parliament that turned around that constituency 
and removed all schools that were built of mud and changed the whole infrastructure of education in Eldoret North constituency. They, they have a story to tell you. Okay, so you'll go back as far back as when you were a member of parliament. As a minister of agriculture, agriculture. my footprints in the Ministry of Agriculture are all over, from sorting out uh, farmer issues, from sorting out the coffee uh, debt issues. Under my watch, we paid 2.6 billion to sort out the coffee issues that had many farmers, their title deeds held by cooperative bank and many other banks, from making sure that there is a predictable price for maize, from ensuring that the prices of fertilizer came down from about 6,000 to 2,800. In fact, President uh, Kibaki did not believe that we had actually brought down the prices of fertilizer. He asked me and my peers that he wanted himself to, to go, go to and launch that and program okay. in Moisbridge, and we took him to Moisbridge. Okay. From my um, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of uh, Higher Education, for your information, for 15 years, this country, if you finished your Form 4, you had to wait for two years to go to university. I sorted out that problem as Minister for Higher Education, and I made sure that there was a transition. Today, when you finish university this year, uh, when you finish Form 4 this year, you are in university next year. I started the program of Tibet, which today we have built under the Jubilee administration, 140 uh, colleges. We have moved the number of students from under 100,000. Today we have 390 students in our Tibet institutions. We are changing the paradigm of our education because of the foundation as lay I laid when I was Minister for Higher Education. I started the program of uh, ensuring that um, uh, universities, uh, because of uh, univers uh, Higher Education Loans Board, went out of its way to give loans not just to students in public universities, but to also students in private universities. And we are made, I have, when, when the time comes, you are able to sell I yourself will, as I will, William I will, I will, I will do, And I am running for president. When if, if I get the ticket of Jubilee, I will present myself and I have a solid track record. No vice president, I know you are the first deputy president, has ever succeeded, oh, apart from Daniel Torreti or Rapmoy, who succeeded uh, Mze, uh, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. No vice president has ever made it to the top. Just one answer. You believe you will break that curse of the vice presidents? Why not? Okay. Is it a curse? All right. Because it's never happened. But so I'm wondering but, what it but, is. But eventually, I'm what eventually it is. Moi became, Moi Moi became but because, became, of, became, because became, of death became, after election. Uh, no, Moi Kibaki became president. Yes, but after. not succeeded straight from the president. But he became president. Yes, not succeeded straight. I'm just wondering straight mm. from Uhuru Kenyatta to William. There Samara. is always a first time. There's always a first time, you believe. Let's talk about uh, corruption a little bit right now. And uh, you have been labeled the high priest of corruption. By who? By Raila. <laughs> by your political <laughs> opponents, <laughs> who you have labeled also names, right? And um, the findings of uh, an opinion poll that uh, Ipsos in 2018 ranked you as the most corrupt politicians in the country at 33%, uh, followed by Anway Guru at 31%, and uh, former <laughs> Daniel, uh, President uh, Daniel Toretita Rapmoy, and of course President Kenyatta was also ranked in this survey. So I want to ask you this and, question. And uh, why don't you mention that also Raila was ranked? Raila Odinga was ranked. I'm, I'm looking at the top three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the top three. Uh, this question you've asked, yeah. you've been asked several times. And I want to quote an interview you did with the BBC in 2019 mm -hmm. about your wealth. You've done some homework, my friend. Yeah, and uh, you told the BBC that uh, when, you asked, uh, when you asked about your net worth, you said the information is available. And you even advised that... Uh, if he did some research prior, who would have not asked the question, he would know. And it's in the public domain. You ask them to Google it. 
and referred them to Parliament's website. When we have looked for that information, we don't seem to be able to get it. So my question to you tonight is, would you state, this question you've been asked several times, would you state your net worth to the public? First, I think, Ken, uh, the same way I've seen you are very good at uh, doing homework. You know, you've, you've done a really good job with homework. But I don't know why you failed on the one of looking for William Ruto's network I have. that you have come to. I have. I so, have. Yes. Well, let me tell you the following. Number one, I am the only politician who, when I come to, uh, in fact, I was expecting this question. Yeah? I am the only politician who gets asked this question. No other politician is asked this question. That's number one. Number two, when I supported Raila Odinga, I was never asked about my net worth. When I supported Uhuru Kenyatta, I was never asked about my net worth. And now we are asking. Now you are asking. Yes. Are you telling me, uh, is your question that Mr. William Ruto, why are you daring to run for president when you are the son of a peasant? Is that your question? No, that's not my question. That's your question? No, my question is... Because you why, why isn't anybody else asked this question? Why, why... I have never been asked this question until people realize that, that, you're William, for president. that William Ruto could possibly run for president. And let me tell you, my friend. I am sure that uh, there are many people, and I want to tell you for the record, there are many people I went to school with, both in, in primary, in secondary, in the university. There are thousands of people of my age, people who share the same background as me, children of the nobodies. Right? But today, after 20, 30, 40 years, they, are, they own a property in Karen, or they own a property in some estate, or they own something in this town. Are you telling me, because that's what you're saying, because you build this around corruption, are you telling me all these thousands of young people, and, and there are many, yeah, who today live in Karen, they live in Lovington, they live in Kileleshwa, who had a humble background the way I did. Are you telling all those people are corrupt? No. That, that they are where they are because they are corrupt? They're not running for public office. Correct. Yes. So are you telling me my crime? You would not bother with me. My crime, and that's why you want to say I'm corrupt, is because I am daring to run for public office? Is that, is that what you're saying? It's a greater calling. And for your it's information. It's a greater calling than they have. Are you telling me, Ken, that... It is okay to be corrupt as long as you are not running for public office. Is that what you are saying? You told citizen once no, that no, corruption no. cannot stop a leader from delivering their mandate. L let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you. Let me finish this uh, story. What you are, the way I, when I, the more I listen to you, the more you are telling me that if you are a, a son of a peasant like William Ruto, you should never run for public office. That's not and corruption. you should never run for president. That's what, Your because Excellency, what nobody I'm asking... Bothered me, if, nobody bothered me. And if, for your information, before I, you ran I, for president. I, want, I, want, I want to tell you yes. that maybe Jomo Kenyatta is lucky that he didn't run for president in our times because he would have been asked, you, a meter reader in City Hall, how did you get yourself here? Or for that record, Moi would have been asked, you, you are a primary teacher. school, primary school teacher. From Sacho. From Sacho, how did you get yourself here? You know, you must be corrupt. You must be this, you must be this. My friend, let me tell you. Please, let us accept that there are children of people from humble background who through hard work, through doing diligently what they are doing, they have gotten themselves somewhere. Please, okay. let me beg you. I, I, you I, know, and, and, I'll and take you back is, there, It is so unfair yes. yeah, 
to run a narrative that you can only have money if your father was something. Okay. And if your father was nothing, you should can you should be poor, you should have no money, and if you have money, you must have stolen. Okay. That is not a gospel that is taking us anywhere. You are on record as having supported BBI one. Yes. And BBI one has one of the recommendations and you have supported as it is, and you actually think it's going to be mutilated by what's happening uh, on the podium. If you support BBA-1, one of the recommendations is to declare wealth. If you support it like you state, yes. would you want to be an example? Because when you asked me why I haven't been diligent to check for this information, mm. one, no one is willing to share this information because it's private. People have gone to court to stop people from accessing private information. It's for the use of the agencies that are clearing these politicians. But no one is willing to share this information about the wealth of William Ruto. So now, in the spirit mm -hmm. of <laughs> supporting the BBA one, would, do you think you will be the first politician to publicly declare what you have <laughs> in the spirit of supporting <laughs> BBA one, the way you've stated? Do you think you'll be, be the first politician to do it? <laughs> Just a simple answer. Would you be that person? Ken, surely. You know, surely. You know, why, why is this issue of wealth? It's a, very, a requirement. A very, no, a very big issue when you have William Ruto. You never ask anybody else. No, we no, asked. The, the president said that there will be law that will be passed for a lifestyle audit. The president himself said he will be number one, and this man, William Ruto, will be number two. So what is the, what is the problem? I have absolutely no issue. I declare wealth every two years as required by law. When the requirement to make it public uh, will, will be passed, I mean, it's not for me to choose whether to obey the law or not. Every Kenyan will, 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 will know uh, uh, what William Ruto owns. You, you have mentioned the son of a peasant mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all, and mm -hmm. perhaps that's the reason why we're asking. So I'll take you back to your journey. Mm -hmm. 1992 is the first time William Ruto was introduced to the public light with YK92 when you're youth. Um, you were barely 26 years, so you're 26 years then. Uh, presumably, you are a teacher at some point, a preacher, and then you became a chicken seller. In 1997, you became MP4 Eldorate North, all the way to when you went in uh, 2013, 2012, when you ran for uh, a joint ticket with President Uru Kenyatta. You served in the cabinet also, right, before then. In the 28 years of your active politics, having enumerated your journey from 1992, where you have admitted yourself, preacher, chicken seller, sometimes a teacher, then politics, YK92, you think this period of 28 years, you're capable to have done what you have done today, with the little we know that has not been made public by you that you cannot tell us how much you're worth. Because if you told us I'm worth a billion shillings, I'll ask you, in the 28 years, you think it's possible to have amassed one billion shillings, but we don't know how much you have. How did you have a billion shillings? Now I'm asking, for example, if, if you told me, okay. if you told me you're worth a billion shillings, let I'm me ask, ask you, you a direct let me ask question. You, let me ask you a question. Yes. How old is Suga Baga? On Facebook. How old is he? Just getting out of teenage. Getting out of youth. How much is he worth? Billions of shillings, but Your Excellency, so we're talking about it, it, your journey. You, you cannot tell me that a teenager can possibly be the richest man on earth and a 53-year-old man should own nothing. I mean, surely. Give me some credit. Okay. I'm a businessman. <laughs> you're, you're a businessman. I, I, I work hard. I, I, I have been a public servant for member of parliament for close to 25 years. I have been deputy president now for eight years. I, I surely. Why is it not I so easy for I you just to state this position the same way you're stating this other position? Which, which other position? Which other Just position? how much is William Ruto? <laughs> why is it so difficult? Why, why is it information that is held too close to your chest? <laughs> My friend, it is because of the deceit that is around this question. And it is because 
Nobody gets asked this question except William Ruto. The day you ask these other people and they answer, and then we come back and answer you. Yeah. You once told uh, mm -hmm. Citizen mm -hmm. TV in mm -hmm. an interview mm -hmm. that uh, corruption mm -hmm. cannot stop a leader from delivering. That's mm -hmm. April last year. Mm -hmm. At the same time, mm -hmm. we have the DPP going to court to push for people who are corrupt, indicted of corruption and mismanagement of public funds, mm -hmm. which you are against, being told you need to step aside and wait for the due process to take its course. Yet, you believe, as William Ruto, your own words, that corruption has never stopped a leader from delivering their mandate. Are you saying that these people should not be asked to step aside? Why are you saying? Is that what you were saying? That they should be left to continue with their work, even as the due process carries on? That's your, that's your statement. It's not mine. That's a statement when, you made on No, that's, I'm talking about this uh, last statement. Okay. When, I, the, when yes. I made the statement that uh, corruption cannot stop a leader from delivering, right? This is my context. I said, we delivered on the SGR, yeah? Corruption did not stop us from delivering our commitment as a Jubilee administration. We delivered the SGR. We delivered the huge program on uh, electrification. We have delivered the big program on Tibet. We delivered the big program on NHIF. We've delivered the big program on many other programs that we have delivered. Sometimes when leaders don't have a vision, when they have no practical program that they can deliver, they look for excuses. And some of the excuses is, oh, you know, I could not deliver because somebody was against me. I could not deliver because this tribe or ethnicity stopped me. I could not deliver because of corruption. In fact, so it, it ends up being an excuse for people who are incompetent, right? We must fight corruption. And in fact, if there is any administration that has given resources, that has given goodwill for the fight against corruption, and for your information, I have never said that those who are charged should not step aside. I have never said that. I don't know where you found that. The context of that statement, which is good. No, now we which, get the which you have, uh, which you completely misunderstood. So we've got the context yeah, of that yeah. statement. I have said that that's the context of, of that statement. And by the way, if I, the, if I get the opportunity to run a government, there will be no corruption because there will be no money to steal because every coin will be used. There will be no coin that will be loitering anywhere for anybody to steal. Okay. Government will be functioning like clockwork. All right. Do you have trust in these institutions that investigate corruption? And why not? Why because not? I'll, I'll take you back to this. The reason why, uh, in your presence, once more, Elke Omarakwet, Senator. Please, uh, Ken. Uh, I'm trying to establish uh, please, that if you uh, really trust these institutions, if, then you should be you, able to stop these narratives. Uh, but you see, yes. I am not a prefect. Why are you reducing me? I'm the deputy president of Kenya. When did you reduce me to go and uh, supervise people who talks what and uh, why? Why do you want me to? This is your to, government, to, deputy to president. To acquire that kind of. Uh, this is your government. The failure and success of this government determines where you go next, and you've said it. Absolutely. Yourself. Yes. When. President Uhuru Kenyatta is firm on fighting corruption. Yes. And he's um, empowered the DCI and the DPP. And in your presence, mm. all these people that I'm about to read, but you <laughs> want me to read because you want me to direct this to them, <laughs> accuse him of politicizing the war on corruption and targeting some people. My question again is, this is your government. Why don't you stop them? Because the success and failure... Let me, uh, let me tell you this. Every institution, including the executive, including the legislature, including every independent institution, is subject to public scrutiny. If the accusations being made by all these people have no basis, right, nobody should bother. You know? Okay. So, I mean, these are people's representatives, and they express what they feel. 
So you're not going to and, stop and them. And there will be no offense. Let me tell you. Yes. There will. There is no offense because it doesn't matter how much people criticize. It doesn't matter how many how many politicians speak and how they speak. If the institutions are discharging their responsibility and mandate within the law and they are not biased as they being alleged by the politicians, it will never stop them from doing anything. But even you, you have said that uh, they have politicized the war on corruption. They are being used, you've alluded to the fact that they are being used to scuttle the development agenda of Jubilee government. And this precisely, you said it during the investigation of the Aurora and Kimo Red Dams. You said they're being used politically. By, uh, for your information, yes. on that particular issue, as Deputy President of Kenya, there is allegation that was being pushed that the government of Kenya, presided over by Uhuru Kenyatta and myself as Deputy President, lost 63 billion shillings in one transaction of Kimware and Aurora. And I asked myself, really? Is it possible that with us sitting in office, that the government of Kenya can lose that amount of money? Was it, it is, 21 billion it is, shillings? It is a fallacy. Even, even 21 billion shillings. To lose 21 billion shillings, it's a fallacy. You but know? this question you were asked before so, about so, it. You know, that, that's exactly what I am saying. Yes. So anybody who's t who tells the public that the government of Kenya, with William Ruto sitting in office as deputy CEO, lost 21 billion shillings, and you want me to sit there and say, yes, we lost 21 billion shillings. I have to be mad. Remarkably. Because that's not the case. Remarkably, it will never out be the of case. the whole government, including President Huru Kenyatta, yeah. it's only William Ruto who defended this position. Absolutely, and I will defend it because it's the right position. Why don't you? And why, why up to today, up to today, the Kimwarer and the Aror have not been cancelled because they were legitimate programs you know, that are there in place. But a review was ordered to all these projects. A review projects. was ordered, which yes. is within the law, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't say there was any illegality or there was any money lost. Because the investigations is, are is, currently is, underway the, and they have people in court that regarding this. They were just indicted the other day Absolutely. by the DPP. But, but have, have, has it been proven that any money was it's lost? It's still in court. It is my position. Yes. And I am saying this sitting here as deputy president, not a coin. At the end of it, that's what we'll find out, yes. which is a good thing for Kenyans. I'd like to play these other sound bites, uh, Your Excellency, then we come back. It's okay, it's okay. Your Excellency, in what context did the President make this remark? You should tell me. The reason why I'm asking, the President may Because sure what the President has said, there is absolutely nothing wrong with what the President has said. He said what is perfect. Okay. Yes. The question there is, now, having heard that, is do you feel the war on corruption is also targeting you? Right at the top, we mentioned the opened investigations. And you said there'll be a lot of things, you even mentioned reviving of the ICC case. Is this one of those cases that you believe that... There will be games, uh, Ken. There is the fight against corruption, which is about corruption. But there will be issues about politics, right? And I have told you, it doesn't just end with matters to do with finance. It also goes all the way to even matters to do with ICC and all the shenanigans around it. It doesn't even stop there. It, it has all manner of uh, manifestations. And I want to tell you, those games will be there, but we will deal with them. Okay. So a direct answer, a game that targets you? 
I don't think so until it becomes obvious. It becomes apparent. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about briefly, just briefly, because I really need to run you really quick about the promises you made to Kenyans mm -hmm. and why you lied to Kenyans with those promises in just a few. <laughs> but I want to talk a little bit about... Um, Lie is a very strong word. <laughs> yes, relax. Kenyans have complained and you saw them on television <laughs> complaining. Uh, why you should change them with the promises you made? Yeah. Um, the party Jubilee Party, you yeah. the deputy party leader. Yeah. Have you... I asked you this question earlier. You didn't answer, di answer directly. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think, as William Ruto, mm -hmm. you have lost your controlling stake in the Jubilee Party? Because it was you together with other leaders, but at the top is you and President Uhuru Kenyatta. Do you think you've lost your controlling stake in the Jubilee Party? In what manner? For your information, I made a conscious decision to seed the opportunity for me to be a co-partner with Uhuru Kenyatta when I decided that we are going to fold URP and TNA and all the other parties and Uhuru, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta becomes the president and the leader. You know, many people even ask me uh, today, oh, did the president consult you when he was doing this? Did the president consult you when he was doing that? I want to tell you, Uhuru Kenyatta is the president of Kenya. We don't have a coalition government. We have a one-party government. The president has the ultimate responsibility to decide. And I only perform my constitutional duty when he asks me for my opinion. And I'm telling you when. It is not always, it is not a requirement for him to ask me about my opinion. So the president runs government appoints ministers, changes ministers the way he wants, right? And so my position, and I chose, I was not forced, okay. I chose to trust Uhuru Kenyatta and to defer to him on the leadership of both the party and government. Are you isolated? in the Jubilee Party? Isolated? Yes. Uh, how, how By President I, Kenyatta. All I have had is, all I read is that isolated when people were saying uh, BBI has isolated William Ruto. Then I'm asking myself, how does BBI, which is about inclusivity and about unity, have isolation in the same statement? Did you isolate yourself? <laughs> how do you achieve that? B by not being at the forefront of supporting BBI when you thought the proposals that were going to come was my, my said friend, to be tsunami for, and for, all that. For, for Did you isolate for yourself? Where? Where, where do people determine where the forefront is? Right I at the beginning thought, of this I process. We, I right we have at said, the beginning. I thought we have said, yeah. and I have made it public, that BBI 1 we support. Whatever other additions will be made, let every Kenyan be given an opportunity to give their views, to give their opinions, and whatever the outcome, will, we will arrive at. And for your information, sometimes when I give my opinion, people think that you are against. It's a very uh, pedestrian, you know, uh, mode of thinking. You know, when somebody gives a different view, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't support. It just means there is, there, there is a different perspective. You know, there is a way of looking at it differently. And you can enrich what you're doing by allowing other opinions. In fact, other opinions is what, uh, is what, is what builds the necessary the consensus process. and enriches and making it robust and making it better. In a case where your boss is involved, the yeah. president, mm -hmm. you're saying you're giving a different opinion. We've mm -hmm. talked about... On Whatever it is, a different opinion that you say, sometimes it doesn't mean that you disagree. It just means it's an alternative opinion. Mm. So where your boss is involved and he's walking one way and you seem to be giving this other like, opinion. Like in what? Like in the BBI. That's the, the BBI. Biggest. What is the problem with the BBI? That's the biggest. Uhuru Kenyatta supports BBI. Yes. William Ruto supports BBI. At, so what, at what point did you... Anyway, the question so is, what is, do you what think is the problem? if you didn't isolate yourself mm. and they didn't isolate you, mm. do you think you're just a casualty? Of, Why? Of, of <laughs> Why do you are, how do you arrive at that, Ken? You know, 
I, I, I am amazed. You know, there is a very orchestrated, deliberate attempt to create division and a wage between me and the president. By who? By all these stories, the one you are even pushing now. Because according to you, it is not possible for William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta to be reading from the same side on BBI. I don't know why. Until, I have said, I until have the said, report was launched, have, Your have Excellency, have you read from it. a different script. In which be way? Be honest with Ken. In which way? You read from a, you expected because the other side said there will be a tsunami. Mm -hmm. There'll be this kind of Did things. you hear the president say there was a, a tsunami? No, no, no. The other side of the BBI and handshake are you? Uh, why are you confusing President Uhuru Kenyatta no, 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 no. with Raila we, Odinga? We, we are, we are Raila Odinga with, is a different person we have, from We are Uhuru done Kenyatta. with President Uhuru Kenyatta. And, and, and we are not, uh, we, they, because they, of, they, they are not the same. You yeah. know, there is a problem when people begin to interpret what Raila Odinga says to mean that's what Uhuru Kenyatta says. But when Uhuru you know, Kenyatta says, me and my brother, mm -hmm. we are together in this, it means they are together. So whatever Raila Odinga is supporting, probably and most definitely when it comes to the BBI and the handshake, there's reading from the same script. So why, why don't you take the same view if the president says this? Why, does, why don't you say, if the president has said it, his deputy must be of the same mind? Why don't you say that? Just the difference. Why, why, why the difference, when it comes to my is, brother, yes. it is what Raila says is what the president must be saying. On the but BBI. when it comes to William Ruto, on the what BBI. the president says is not what the deputy is saying. On why? the BBI and you the know, handshake. That's why, you know, you are trying to find no, a no, just on the BBI and the and handshake. You know, and let's even, be honest even, with this. Even, even this, this whole problem, yeah, is because people are dead set in driving a wage and dividing Jubilee and making sure there is us versus them. I want to tell you, Ken, we will not allow you. I will not allow you, and I will not allow anybody to create a wedge, a wedge or to create camps because that will play against the unity and inclusivity we are so much after. Unity and inclusivity. Yeah. How strong is your party, the Jubilee Party, at this moment? We have challenges in Jubilee Party. We haven't met as a party for the last two years. We've not had a PG. That's the correct Whose position. Responsibility is this? We are going to have uh, party elections, hopefully in March. But we will, that is an in-house matter for us as a party. We will sit down, we will work it out, and we will move forward. My confidence is that when we set out with President Uhuru Kenyatta, we agreed that we must have a solid national party that will carry the aspirations of all Kenyans, majority of Kenyans, from across ethnicities, from across regions, from across religion, and take it forward. But and you agree that, Jubilee Party is divided? Jubilee Party has issues, but they are not as major as the one in the NASA. NASA is let's, let's talk about, let's stick to Jubilee. Mm -hmm. You agree Jubilee Party <laughs> is divided? <laughs> What is your relationship uh, like with the party leaders and the neck at the Jubilee Party, just briefly? Uh, we haven't had a meeting of uh, NEC as well, yeah. But but you know, when we meet, there is a basically agreement that uh, there will come an opportunity for us to meet as NEC. There will come an opportunity for us to meet as PG. There will come an opportunity for us to organize our party so that we can uh, move uh, into the next election. And for your information, why the party is important, I am of the very strong belief that even the de-ethnicization of our politics will not be achieved by creating two, three positions in the, in the Constitution, ostensibly so that you have four or five communities. Okay you know, in the, in the accommodated in the national executive, that will not solve the ethnic, the de-ethnicization of our oh, politics. Okay. What will solve the de-ethnicization of our politics is a national political party where a person, even from a small community, Has an like, happens, like happens in Tanzania, Tanzania, the, 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 the secret of why Kikwete coming from a small tribe of why Muni coming from the island became president is because of the CCM party. Okay. And that is where we are going to sort out 
matters ethnicity. In fact, we run the very high risk if we say we need to create four or five positions for four or five communities to be entrenched in the constitution, we We'd can actually we run the risk of constitutionalizing marginalization because five communities can will not solve the problem and you, lock you, out the, the 37 th communities your and we will have a your big relationship problem. with the SG of your party. Who, uh, who? Secretary General of your party. Tuju. Yes. Yes. What is the relationship? I think Tuju has said it himself. I'm asking you. I am the deputy party leader. Yes. Tuju is uh, the party secretary general, and there are no there are no issues. We there are no issues. Are On no July 15, 2019, mm -hmm. you tweeted this. <laughs> so our democracy is so liberal that the SG of a ruling party has become the chief strategist of an opposition. Correct. And and that I even asked Tuju himself directly. You know, when I, I, I heard what he was trying to say, but Tuju explained himself to me. And you understood and I, it. And, and Why and elections I, before March? That is what the party constitution says, and that is what is demanded by the, what if it doesn't happen? By the registrar of political parties. We are a responsible party. And you want credible... Pres president Uhuru you want Kenyatta credible is a Democrat. Yes. Yeah. And you want credible... Is a, is a Democrat. Yes. You want and credible elections for your party. Absolutely. We have to publish the register. We have to have registered members of the Jubilee Party. We are on the 20-something of January, barely two months to go. You believe that duration is enough to organize for your party elections across the country? Who tells you we don't have a party list already? Published. Who tells you published. that? It hasn't been published. Publica publication is a one-day event. But we haven't seen it. So I'm asking, you believe this period is Are sufficient? You, I, once the timetable is released, yes. all those things will, fee, will, 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 will fall in place when, when that comes. And uh, for your information, uh, my friend, let me take you back a bit, you know, because we are talking about party, you know, what my thoughts are were around this party. Even as we go out to BBI, and even as we go to uh, make our views known, and even as we give our suggestions, I want to tell you, one of the greatest challenges we must deal with is not the sharing of positions by politicians. It is the creating of opportunity for millions of young people who do not have hope. Can I talk about that specifically, have, just and they briefly? they do not have a 